It's been a year now since Rossi retired, but still no sign of his NSR 500cc bike that Honda promised him. So, what's the big deal? Why make such a fuss about it anyhow? Well, here's why. This bike is very dear to Rossi's heart. He had already made a spot for it at his home. He wanted at least one of Honda's bikes for his collection, and this was the one he chose. Prior to Rossi's final win at Valencia, he was once again united with all nine bikes he used to win his world championships with. He has most of these bikes in his collection, except for two Hondas, the NSR 500cc that he used to win his first title in the 2001 World Championship and the Honda RC 211V which he used to win the 2002 and 2003 World Championships with. Rossi went on to say, I expressed my desire to Honda to have the bike, but the answer was no. One could argue that Honda still has a little bit of grievance towards Rossi after they had a fallout and parted the company after the 2003 season. So why would Honda feel the need to keep the bike? Let's find out. Rossi won three world titles in a row for Honda in 2001, 2002, and 2003. Many people were saying he had won his three consecutive titles because he rode for Honda at that time. This fact, along with the fact Rossi said he didn't feel that Honda was treating him right, left him making the decision to leave Honda and move to a different team, which ended up being Yamaha. Rossi said, Honda had just too many rules of what I can and can't do if I signed another contract with them. In 2004, Rossi made history with Yamaha by winning the championship with a bike that had only achieved two MotoGP victories since it moved from the 500cc class in 2001 before he got his hands on it. Before that, Yamaha hadn't won a championship since Wayne Rainey, which was back in 1992. Rossi had made a name for himself as one of Honda's best riders for his consistently good performances. Even so, Honda took him for granted. Rossi was furious when Honda decided to supply the same machinery he was riding to all six riders, with the RC211V for the season of 2004, which was a way of underminding him as their best rider. Rossi refused to get into another contract with Honda at the Pacific GP in 2003 and stated that he'd not signed the contract that Honda presented him at Mategi, despite what the people said. According to Rossi, he'd not been reading newspapers. Rossi was unaware of what the media had been spreading about him. At that moment, he was talking with Yamaha to ride for them, and this time around, he would have more freedom. Honda and Rossi conflicted over a contract because of Honda's attitude. Honda insisted on commercially controlling Rossi's brand, destroying the relationship. The same brand would grow to become the VR46 under Yamaha later on. And to date, it can be seen on Dainese jackets, merchandise, and even full replica liveries. When Yamaha got the chance, it capitalized on the brand that Honda had tried to grab. Rossi gave one of the best performances at the starting round of the 2004 season in South Africa, in the Fakisa Freeway. Before him, no other rider had ever given such a performance by being the only rider in the history of the MotoGP to claim a previous season with a different manufacturer, which was Honda. Then the very next season proceeded to win again when still in his debut with another manufacturer, which was one fantastic achievement. Rossi was so exhilarated during his cooldown lap when he stopped at the side of the track and shed tears of joy. Rossi was more impressive than ever after leaving Honda and claimed four more world championship victories with Yamaha, making his decision in 2004 an excellent move for his career which left him a Yamaha legend. He changed a slow and tricky to ride motorcycle into a winner of multiple titles, and so dispelling the myth that it wasn't just the bike that was under him that won races, but the skill of a talented racer also had a great impact on winning victories, which he emphatically proved. This fact alone was rubbing Honda's nose in it, which didn't go down too well. As all of you avid fans of MotoGP will know, Rossi's career blossomed with Yamaha, and he had his rivalries along the way, but none other than his rivalry with Marc Marquez, who still is, as of the time of making this video, Honda's top rider. Things were about to get worse. The Great Rivalry with Marquez To get you up to speed and fill you in on, well, the most important parts of the story on why Honda are still angry with Rossi, we need to start from the beginning. Rossi's rivalry to date with Marquez is filled with, um, well, the hatred towards the guy. And this was brought about every time they clashed on the racetracks. In 2013, Marc Marquez rose to the MotoGP category. Their relationship was good at the beginning. Marc even mentioned Rossi as being his childhood idol, 
and felt great enthusiasm facing him on the racetracks. However, the respect they had for each other quickly faded in 2015, when they collided in the starting race in Argentina during the third round. Mark started from pole and from the beginning stages of the race, he'd already created a gap, but Rossi caught up with him and the face-off began. Mark had contact with Rossi at the fifth turn and hit his rear tire. He fell off his bike and as a result could not rejoin the race. Rossi went on to win his second race of the season and none took the crash seriously but as a racing incident. They would face a similar incident again while at Assen some months after, where they once again collided. But Rossi was quick, picked up his bike and rode to victory despite what had happened. After the race, Mark seemed unbothered by the result, but his team had other ideas and did attempt to challenge the race results. Their relationship was completely ruined after the race in Malaysia at the penultimate round. Marquez had experienced a poor season and was no longer a contender for the championship. At the race in Malaysia, temperatures rose quickly during the race, with Mark running wide in the early stages and allowing Jorge Lorenzo to take second. Then, the furious battle began and continued for quite a few laps. When they got to the 14th turn, they collided on the track's edge, and Mark was knocked out of the race. Rossi continued and finished the race in third place, but was penalized after the race by a deduction of three points off his championship, and was also made to start from the back of the grid at Valencia in the championship decider. Rossi managed to ride from the back to fourth position during the race, but Jorge Lorenzo won first place, with Marc Marquez following him in second. Fans accused Mark of deliberately defending Jorge the entire race against Danny Pedroza, his teammate, and Rossi even called the win a Spanish stitch-up. Their relationship was as cold as ever at the start of 2016, but the rivalry died somewhat when they had a handshake after facing off in Barcelona. They did it for Luis Salom, who had crashed at high speeds and died at the Catalan circuit. Nevertheless, the fire was lit again two years later in Argentina. Mark received a penalty after he stalled his bike on the grid. When these things happen before the race gets underway, you should automatically start from the back of the grid, but Mark got his bike restarted and took his original starting position. However, he did have a ride through though. After Mark's ride through and while racing through the field on the latter stages, Mark caught up with Valentino, who was in fifth place, and tried to overtake him with four laps to go, but he was pushing too hard and struck Valentino, and pushed him off the track onto the grass verge, and Valle fell off his bike, which I'm sure you'll have guessed by now didn't go down well in the Yamaha garage. Mark visited Rossi's tent to try and apologize, but Rossi wasn't having any of it, and one of his teammates even sent him away. Their relationship never regained after Argentina, during the San Marino race in 2018, Rossi was unwilling to shake Mark's hand and stated they did not need to shake hands because they had no problem. However, they shook hands a year later at the Argentine GP before the podium celebration start, which showed no tension between them. As much as the rivalry died down, Honda still held a grudge against Rossi because while Rossi was not racing with them, he was giving their rider a difficult time on the tracks. And the fact that Yamaha got to enjoy Rossi's brand, while they did not, probably made things worse for Rossi, which by all accounts was probably the reason Honda refused to give Rossi the bike he had always desired. In one of the events after the rivalry, Rossi stated that the bike was meant to be his, and he hoped Alberto Puig would finally let him have it. He even had a room especially designed in his home for the bike, but he never got it, and if Honda would change its mind and give him the bike, then he would keep it in the best condition. What is Valentino Rossi doing now? After spending many years racing motorcycles, Rossi ended his motorcycle racing career for car racing at the end of the MotoGP season of 2021. It would seem that luck was in his favor because he landed in the GT World Championship with Audi. During an interview in 2022, Rossi said he hoped to participate in the 2023 GT World Challenge. Seeing that he's working on a series, he had joined the same year as a WRT Audi squad member. He is almost sure he will get a chance to compete in the championship next year. But so far, Rossi has not addressed whether he will stick with WRT after putting an end to his Audi partnership with 13 seasons behind them. The WRT boss said there was hope for Rossi, as there was a desire to keep the relationship going for the second season. Do you think Honda should give Valentino the bike he so much desires? Let us know what you think in the comments. Be sure to check out Moto Plus for more fantastic videos. See you there!